Hey everyone, uh, so I'm creating a short uh, yet hopefully effective video uh, in this series. This is the third video for this particular chapter, chapter 18, uh, dealing with the entity framework. And I'm going to start by creating an empty website, just calling it EF4, because I already know I just created a 3. And on this video, I wanted to use a different approach with the entity framework, and that was the code first from database, right? So up until this point, we've been using the designer first from database. And so you, one of the first things you saw when you went through that wizard in the first two videos is you saw a designer uh, UML diagram. And even though we didn't do this, um, the whole purpose, you know, is to take a database and put it into UML diagram, and then you can customize it for your application code. But just, to, you know, we didn't really do that much. That the UML diagram, in other words, went untouched. We didn't, we didn't mess with it. Um, but we could have. Um, this approach is a more code-centric approach. In other words, we're not using a designer GUI to make changes to our application code. What we're doing is we're we're looking at a database structure and we're 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 having it generate code for us and kind of skipping the designer piece um, and really the main benefit that I've found is it's just a more of a code centric approach and so if you like writing code versus if you like working with GUIs and drag and drop type functionality uh, me personally I like the code a little bit more so I, I like this approach better it suits me because I like the code um, so a little couple quirks as I've been working through this and uh, I'll try and point those out at least what I've seen along the way um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add my app code folder right away um, because this is where I want the generated classes to go I want them to go in the app code folder and then I add a data model just like before It's a Halloween data model, and you know, again, we're not a, creating a designer from database. We're creating the code from the database. Mm -hmm. And per normal, we need to connect in, so I can do this kind of quickly. Keep these settings the same. Now you'll notice what some another difference here is we can't select our stored procedures, which is fine. We haven't been using stored procedures anyways. I'm going to select the same tables as before. We still have the option to make it plural or singular based on the object name. So if you have a collection, it's going to be plural. Um, and include the four and key columns in the model, of mm -hmm. course. So we'll let that spin up here and generate some code for us. And again, you're going to see right away in this app code folder what we've generated is code. And so we've got a category class. And what's really nice about it is it looks at the database and sees, hey, the database only allows 10 characters for the category ID or 15 characters. And it's required. That means it's not nullable. And so these... Uh, uh, annotations, these data annotations, these requirements for your data are automatically set and that's definitely a pro if you're looking at pros and cons uh, these data annotations were not there automatically like they are uh, with the code first so I like that a lot and um, one thing I noticed 
here is that they're kind of looking for a namespace. And a namespace, I think of a namespace uh, as an organizational tool. It's just like a folder. If you wanted to, you could just name up uh, a folder. Uh, you can give it a name here. Uh, you know, and then that's essentially putting it in a folder, if you can think of it that way, called EF. Well, then this one also has to be EF, and the product EF, and now, now they have a namespace, and there's no errors there. Everything should compile. Matter of fact, let's do a build. Everything's clean. Um, that's fine. I actually, when I practice this, I just got rid of the namespace. And I found that to work just fine. So you could do whatever suits you. I'm getting rid of the namespace and save all my files and do another build here. See it's successful and everything's playing nice. Um, inside of this Halloween.cs this is our database context file, so we'll be instantiating one of these. Uh, and then you're ready to go to work. I mean, really, at this point, very little has changed. It's really just a matter of, we have this database. Do we generate a diagram first? And then we can change the diagram, which will then, in effect, change our application code. Or do we just go ahead and generate the application code directly and make changes from here. Uh, again, this is my preference since it's a more code-centric approach, but just to generate or just to show you that it's exactly the same as what we've been doing in the last two videos, I'll throw in a grid view, add in an item type, and a select method okay lost my place here I paused the video so let me back up here select method equals generate a new method and uh, we get to write our little link statement here so let's generate uh, Halloween uh, actually we just need to return Okay, so that's about as simple as a, of a link statement as we can write, just about, and uh, just a select. And we're auto-generating columns. And so there you have it. And, and really, all, everything that we've learned in the first two videos can be applied at this point. Um, this is just a different approach for starting the process and creating these classes and, and a few minor differences. So that's why we're keeping this video short. I got it in under nine minutes. And that is the end of chapter... 18.